Now we got to look at your lamb leader. What do you think lamb leader means? John the Baptist knew what it meant. And he said in John 1, 29, it was the next day and John saw Jesus coming towards him. And he said, and this, I hope this is on video. It's probably not in YouTube right now, but I hope it's on video. Because John the Baptist was standing there and somebody else was with him and they heard him say, pointing to Jesus, Behold! The Lamb of God. Now, 2,000 years ago, they all knew what a lamb looked like. <laughs> right? Because everybody in Israel killed the lamb and ate the lamb at Passover. And the shepherds kept lambs. And they used the wool from the lambs for clothing. <laughs> Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, it's like, wait a minute. Israel, Israelites 2,000 years ago, Jewish people, knew that the Lamb was part of the Old Testament in saving Egypt in uh, Israel, coming out of Egypt, the land of bondage, right? So that takes away the sin of the world. So it's like, wow, what a statement. Okay, John, tell us more. But John doesn't tell us more, right? But then again, the next day in verse 35, John stood with two disciples this time and looking at Jesus as he walked said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, <clears throat> you know, we prefer to call Jesus, Jesus, right? Because that's what people knew him by. Only back in his day, Jesus meant Joseph. Uh, no, Joshua. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. He meant Joshua. Right? And there, were, there was little Joshua here and little Joshua over there. And there were all kinds of Joshuas, just like there's all kinds of Johns. Right? <clears throat> Anyhow, it, it came forward into our modern language as Jesus. Right? But John, is, John the Baptist is saying, that's the Lamb of God. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the Lamb of God is going to do this and the Lamb of God is going to do that and the marriage supper of the Lamb of God. And the Lamb of God is going to sit on the throne and rule the nations. <clears throat> it's almost like we have in this, <clears throat> in this nation, we say, Mr. President. Right? Now, <clears throat> if you say Mr. President, it's a sign of respect. It's a sign of your authority. Right? And Donald Trump, you know, has said in the past, he said, all my friends used to call me Donald. They say, hey, Donald. <laughs> and he said, now when they come into the Oval Office, they say, Mr. President. <laughs> and he said, it took some getting used to, right? But it's a sign of respect. And the Lamb of God is a title of sign of respect that Jesus is, was, has been throughout history. And... The coming of the Lamb of God is going to rule and sit on the throne and rule planet Earth. And I'm not so sure we'll be calling him Jesus anymore. And if you'll notice in the New Testament, they, they tend to lean from going, gee, just Jesus. They start using the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll see a lot of those in the New Testament, those three words all strung together. The Lord Jesus Christ. So... It's pretty clear who they mean. Most people don't know what Christ means. It means Messiah, which was the long-awaited one, right? Okay, so Jesus wrote in Revelation, Revelation 13, 8, All, meaning most, most who dwell on earth, will worship him, meaning the beast, whose name have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. What does that mean? We know Jesus died about 2,000 years ago. So what do they mean? The lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Before Jesus created the physical universe, he and the Father knew 
that he was going to be the sacrificial lamb of God that would take away the sins of the world. He knew that's how it was going to work. They had planned it. They had drawn out the plans of the universe and Adam and Eve and, and, and humanity and 6,000 years of man's history. And the, they knew ahead of time that Jesus was going to have to suffer and die. John 1, 3. All things were made by made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. He was the creator of the worlds, of the universe. Verse 12, But as many as received or accepted him, Jesus, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe, trust in his name. Now, believe is a watered down word, and you can say, well, do you believe in COVID-19? It's like, you're not going to find very many people around these days who don't believe in it at all, right? They can't see it, they can't measure it, they can't touch it, but they might know somebody who got it, they might even know somebody who got it and died, right? Um, trust. If you trust in the name, the authority of Jesus Christ, then you trust what he said. If you trust what he said, John 3.13 says, No man has ascended into heaven, that's what he said. You trust it. You believe it. And two billion people read it, but they don't believe it. So they don't trust in the words of Jesus. Verse 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It was obviously Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The first book of the Bible shows God's plan to provide a lamb person to pass over the sins of every true believer. Genesis 22, 7. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Genesis 22, 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself a lamb. So, before the foundation of the world, the Father and the Son knew that Jesus was going to be the Lamb of God. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Abraham is inspired to say that God is going to provide a Lamb. Then Jesus set the new nation of Israel free from bondage in Egypt by Lamb's blood painted on the doorposts. This was a gigantic event. They'd had nine plagues already. Egypt was being destroyed, dismantled, piece by piece by piece. There was only one person in all of Egypt who said, no, I'm not letting the Israelites go free. And that was Pharaoh. <clears throat> and then came the 10th plague. Then Jesus set the new nation of Israel free from bondage in Egypt by lamb's blood painted on the doorposts. Verse 21 of Exodus 12. Then Moses called the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take the lambs for yourselves and kill the Passover lamb. So, in Revelation, when you read the Lamb of God, you could just as easily read the Passover lamb of God. Because any human being who never has his sins passed over by God suffers the death penalty dead for all eternity. You can only avoid that eternal death penalty by having your sins passed over by the Lamb of God. That's how important this title is, right? <clears throat> verse 21, verse 22. And you shall strike the, the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Verse 23. And the Lord will pass through and strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the Lamb's blood on the two doorposts, the Lord will, and here's the word, and most people can read over this word in a couple of seconds or less. The Lord will pass over the door. So where do we get the term Passover? Right there. <clears throat> you don't have to suffer the death penalty because if the blood is painted on the door back in Egypt, then the Lord will pass over. He won't go into that house and kill the firstborn in that house. So after 10 giant miracles, <clears throat> Israel was set free from bondage because of the Lamb's blood on the doorposts. And this was a physical sign of being set free from the bondage of sin. 
that Jesus would fulfill on the day of his death when his shed blood poured onto the ground beneath that stake. The blood kept their firstborn from death. They looked to the lamb's blood to save their lives. The book of Revelation puts the capstone on the lamb's blood thread throughout all of human history, <clears throat> which I think is why you can still tell that the Lamb of God reference in the book of Revelation means Jesus. But they could have just said Jesus, 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 Jesus from beginning to end in the book of Revelation. And they'd have missed this Mr. President title. They'd have missed this. This is the thread of the Lamb of God's blood being shed, causing the passing over for the sins of mankind, allowing people to live for all eternity and not to have, to have to suffer the eternal death penalty. So from before the foundation of the world until the Lamb Jesus rules all nations, a major continuous thread in the Bible will be washing away the sins by the blood of our Lamb leader. Jesus is our Lamb leader. Revelation 1.5, from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins by his own blood. So the Passover wine that we drink represents the shed blood of Christ. We do it every year. We remind ourselves <clears throat> that Jesus is washing away our sins, is passing over our sins, as long as we stay in partnership with Jesus. Revelation 5, 9, they sang a new song saying, You, the Lamb, are worthy, for you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood. Now, but we have Protestant songs that sing about the blood. They didn't miss the power of the blood, right? But they did miss the power of the Passover service, the proclamation memorial service, you know, <clears throat> proclaiming, announcing, teaching his, his death until he comes. And now, I think they did away with Good Friday, didn't they? Or, or Gary was telling us we had, to eat, we had to eat fish on Friday last night, right? <laughs> so, so but, but I think the Roman Catholic Church said you can eat meat, is that right? You can eat meat now on Friday, is that right? Anyhow. I think some do. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think the Pope decided we didn't have to keep that going any longer, but whatever. Um, so, so if you ask people, when do we celebrate the death of Christ? Um, when would that be? I guess it was on Good Friday in the old days, but what did people do on Good Friday? And why would they call it Good Friday? <laughs> but anyhow, so we memorialize his death. Easter memorializes his resurrection. They, they missed the boat. So Jesus is washing us and we are involved in the washing of our spiritual garments in his spiritual shed blood. We, get, we will get and live with Jesus and the Father into eternity because of the shed blood and its power. Revelation 7, 14. And he said to me, these are the ones who came out of... Now, if you look in your Bible, you're going to see, in most probable, you're going to see who've come out of the great tribulation. The the in most of your Bibles is not italicized. If you look in the Greek, the word the is not even there. So what it should read is, these are those who came out of or come out of great or much tribulation. Now, raise your hand if your Christian life has had much tribulation in it. See, look at that, right? So, we overcome. That's what overcome means. You overcome <clears throat> much tribulation. Those who are going to live into the, the great tribulation the last three and a half years are going to be threatened with death if you don't fall down and worship the beast power and the image of the beast and take 666 as the mark of the beast, right? So there will be much, 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 much tribulation, but most Christians have had to. Most Christians have lost jobs, 
Because of the Feast of Tabernacles or keeping the Sabbath, there have been family tribulations because. So a lot of people have gone through much tribulation and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So spiritually speaking, physically you can't wash anything in blood and make it clean, right? I don't know if you've tried that or not, <laughs> right? But you get blood on the garment, unless you're pretty clever with washing, the blood is going to mess with that garment, right? So true believers are to be using the Lamb's blood to overcome Satan's temptation. Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him, meaning Satan, the accuser, by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, how do we do this? Right? Well, one, we, we focus on the blood of the Lamb in the Passover service, spiritually. And then when Satan comes along to tempt us, this verse is saying, because we're connected to the thread of the blood of the Lamb, that causes us, that helps us to overcome Satan's temptation, which is critically important on a daily basis, right? So they overcame him, the Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and their word of their testimony. And part of the word of their testimony is they proclaim Christ's death on Passover night, which two billion people are not doing. <clears throat> and they did not love their lives unto the death. So Satan and Hitler the Hitler-like beast person. And I like to say it that way because <clears throat> anybody reading the book of Revelation, they just read, and the beast did this, and the beast did that, and the beast did this and that. And when you say beast, you kind of think of, what do you think of? What does the average person think of when you think beast? Are they thinking of a wolf or a bear? A what? A dinosaur is a beast. Yeah, that's a good beast. Right. <clears throat> a bear. If you're out in the woods and you see a bear, that's a beast. If you're out, <clears throat> out in, in Africa and you see a lion coming towards you, that's a beast. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> in, in Revelation, the beast person is a Hitler-like beastly person. And he will fight against the lamb and they will lose the battle. That's the good news. Right? Is, is the Hitler-like beast person and Satan say, well, we're just going to attack Jesus and all his angels and all the resurrected saints and we're going to kill them and we're going to win the battle. And Jesus says, eh, no, I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to kill all of you. Right? And that's the battle of Armageddon. Revelation 17, 14. These will make war with the Lamb and the Lamb will overcome them. Yeah, he wins. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And those who are with him, when he wins the battle of Armageddon, are people like us, who are called and then become chosen or select, and then stay faithful on the pathway of eternal life until death. So if we cleave to Jesus, the Lamb leader, we will be there, in this picture because we were called and we responded to the calling and we became select chosen people and we stayed faithful until we died because Jesus is our lamb leader. At the bread and wine Passover holy convocation meeting each year we recommit for another year for another 12 months out ahead of us. It's like a pilot, right? I think they still do this with pilots. Every year you're supposed to have a physical if you've got your own private, <coughs> private pilot's license because they don't want you flying up there in your plane this close to having a heart attack and crashing onto the ground and burning up somebody's house and killing everybody in the house. So you're supposed to get a physical to see if you're healthy enough to go flying in the sky. So. At the Bread and the Wine Passover Holy Convocation meeting, we recommit each year to following and obeying our Lamb Leader, who is the Passover Lamb 